get inspired by successful people. We love the fame, the glamour and all the wonderful things in their life. But how often do we stop and think about their pains, their struggles, their failures and all the things that upset them. They too are the sum total of all their choices and to fully understand their lives, we must stop and ponder and think about all the things that are not so wonderful in their journeys. Hello everyone, I'm Bansi Agarwal and you're welcome to If I Had Not Failed on News 24. We're coming to you straight from Hotel Yakinio today. My guest today is one of the most dynamic people I've ever met. Professionally, he's a banker. When you listen to him speak, you realize he's a motivator. But when you genuinely, truly start following his ideas, you know that deep down inside, he is a leader. He's had an illustrious career in banking and today finds himself as the CEO of Nabil Bank. Namaste Dai, thank you so much for being here. Namaste, thank you for having me. Absolutely, my pleasure. We've been waiting for this for a while and I'm so glad that things managed to sink, the universe conspired and here we are having this conversation. Exactly, I keep watching the show and I keep wondering why doesn't Manchi call me? What's wrong with me? And I'm so glad to be here. Well, I'm <laughs> well, we've been thinking about this for a long time and I wanted to keep you perhaps for the grand finale or something. But nevertheless, I'm ex extremely excited that this happened and it happened at the perfect time. Absolutely. So my first question to you is, what do you consider your greatest failure? I think when you think about greatest failure, uh, many people talk about one incident in their life or something that happened or something that didn't happen. For me, it's not uh, one incident. Uh, for me, when I think about failure in my life, I think about a certain part of my journey. And that journey, I think, started with the fact that my mother was in the Foreign Service and my father was in the World Health Organization. So every two, two and a half years to three years, we used to switch schools, me and my younger brother. And when a child switches schools, the whole world changes. And initially it was, we were very apprehensive, but then we got used to it. And then life went through and I went through nine different schools. I was 16, I did my O-levels and then I went to the States for college and all. But when I look back now and I look at the path that I've journeyed on, I find it to be empty. My greatest failure is I don't have friends with roots in my childhood. Because whether it was Dhaka or Delhi or Missouri or wherever it was that we were, it was there, we got on the plane, Tata goodbye, and we learned to switch off. Because at that time there was no Facebook, there was no Insta, there was no staying in touch and no one was writing letters. Therefore, at that time it was a way of coping for me and my brother. And now my brother also, my, he was my younger brother, but he expired at a very young age. And after that I feel a void. Because he was my childhood friend. He, that was the connection we had. Wherever we were, we were together. But now that he's not there also, my greatest failure in life is that I don't have friends that I can say, yeah, they were my school, Langutia Yar, you know, they, they were, they, we don't have. I have very good friends now, a small group of very good friends now. Um, but then I look at people and they have good friends who, are, who have been with them from school and all, not me, I met them much later on. That is my greatest failure. And anybody watching this show, don't undermine that. Don't be in such a rush to study, to do college, to do university, to get a job, to get a promotion, to do your business, to do this, to do that, that you don't have enough time to make friends. Because there will come a time, like the time I'm in right now, when you look back and you look at the path, it's a long path, it's a glorious path, it is a path of giving me lots of success, accolades and applause. But then I don't find people who've walked with me throughout that journey. And that is my greatest failure. To me, as I hear this, I'm getting a lot of different thoughts in my head. And when I expected you to answer this, I thought you'll talk about maybe a time in your professional career where you were not as successful as you would have wanted to be, not achieving as much as you would want to. And yet this comes as an eye opener because coming from you, this means a lot. As a person who the world thinks has everything, still feels that void. When did you realize this? I think um, I realized this when the Anil Shah became Anil Shah. And whether I was going to a Ganesh temple or a restaurant or a movie hall, people were recognizing me, you know, taking selfies and making sure I didn't stand in lines and all that. That's when I realized, my God, everybody knows me. And my little daughter and my wife and everybody was saying, oh my God, it's difficult to walk on the road with you. Everybody knows you. But then when I sat and I looked at my life, I said, yeah, everybody knows me. But 
that's an acquaintance, you know, that's, it's like going to a reception and saying hi, hello to everybody, but then going home alone, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's when I started to realize that, yeah, this is a very lonely life I've actually led. I'm happy because my wife, my um, daughter, then my close friends were all there. But then there are times when they are with their friends. My wife has a friend who she's been with since she was in Loreto Convent, you know, and they, they're the closest friends and so on and so forth. But you don't need many. But even if you had three or two, uh, even one, you know, who was there with you throughout. Uh, and I always thought, you know, I was the Dai and my Bhai would be with me throughout. But when that broke, um, that sort of, that's when I realized that, wait a minute, you know, this is going to be a lonely life. And I think my daughter picks up a lot of slack because I pour all that into her. And then there are, of course, expectations and this and that from her because, you know, um, she is now uh, sort of not not only my future but uh, my present and then I, I, I you know my everything but that's when i realized that uh, one when my brother expired and second when the anil shah started becoming the anil shah and everybody thought oh he knows everybody he must have lots of friends and he must be you know uh, an amazing social circle and all and then when you sit alone and, and you close your eyes and you realize just how alone you are that's when you realize that wait a minute uh, something has not gone right and that's when i realized and this is a failure i cannot correct this is a failure that uh, I cannot reverse uh, and say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to, I cannot go back to school and say, I'm going to make friends that last forever. It's something that's gone. Absolutely. It's also a question. It also re makes you realize about the impermanence of things. Yes. And, you know, this whole being able to compartmentalize, I think, is a very strong trait that you have, yes. which not everyone does. Yeah. And on the flip side, True. it could be a big, very big problem for people. Yes. But in your case, the compartmentalization itself became a problem in a way. Don't you think so? I definitely think so. And, and everyone who's close to me says that, you know, and I compartmentalize very well because I had to. It's yeah. in my DNA. You know, when you are uh, six and you're moved away from Nepal to Dhaka and then you're nine and you move from Dhaka to somewhere and somewhere to somewhere and somewhere to somewhere. If you're not able to compartmentalize, if you're and, and then also the other fact is sometimes I was with my mom, sometimes with my dad. People used to ask, are they divorced? But they were both career people and they were both in different places at the time. So you had to do that to survive. But then that became part of my DNA. That became part of who I was. And that was all right until I realized that, wait a minute, by doing all this, there are no connections between the compartments. And those connections are what I miss and I consider my failure. And, and when I look even, even at my spouse, even, even at the friends, close friends that I have, and then look at the relationships that they have with people who you know, have been with them throughout, and, and I say, wait a minute, you know, there, there's something missing. And there is definitely something missing. And again, I stress to people who are rushing through life, because I rushed through life. I was 40-something when I became CEO. I've been in banking for 30 years. Of that, more than half of it, I've been a CEO of a bank. And people say, wow, look at that. That's so great. But when you become the CEO of a bank, even the friends you have, you cut off from because you it consumes you so much. You know, Bia, Bartaman, Chutti, Haru, this, that. People are saying, I'm going to Pokhara. I'm going trekking here. I'm going. I can do none of that. You know, I, I, for years and years and years, I've just been consumed by my work. And, and then this, this persona that has been built around me. Um, and that's why I think today um, I'm breaking away more from banking and coming more to talk to youth like you, uh, to motivate, to innovate, to, to share the knowledge that I have so that their starting point is far ahead of where I started from. Um, I think that is an, another way of me trying to seek connections, connections that I find missing in my life. And although I know I cannot make lifelong friends, uh, but at least with these connections, I find some fulfillment, uh, which I hope uh, will help fill that void that I feel within me. And that's a great point that you say that you're trying to now at this point in time try new connections and make new connections. How important is it for you? Two things now I'm going to ask you. Number one, you know, I read somewhere that one of the most important needs that a human being has is to have somebody to witness their life. Everyone's life is full of color and drama and story. And no matter what you do, whether you're a cobbler or you're Anil Shah or you are whoever you are, you feel your life is wonderful. You might not be happy all the time, but your life is wonderful. It's worth being witnessed. How important is it for you to have somebody close to you who's witnessing your life? That's first. Secondly, how important are conversations and connections for you? Because this is what this show is about. Absolutely. Um, I think it's very, very important to have witnesses. Okay. If you look at my life, the public has been a witness to my life. Right. Okay, A cousin of mine who lives in Mallaj uh, and runs a resort there, he's, he was doing some renovation, came down to a hardware store and there was a paper with an interview of mine. And he said, not the owner of the store, but the boy who was working in the store, 
looked at that and looked at me and said, Koi leke garsa vani elle garsa hai, yes ma dham cha. He said, Anil man, this is in, in Baini, a hardware store, some young guy who's got faith that you're going to do something. Just because so many people have witnessed all my journey, whatever has happened and so on and so forth and everybody feels I know Anil Shah and all that. But what is missing is that personal witness. Those are witnesses mm -hmm. who are, uh, have their own perceptions and so on and so forth, but not a sounding block for me where I can sit down and say, hey, what do you think? And someone comes back. For me, that is my spouse. And now my daughter more and more, where they say, I think this is good, this is bad, this is what, this is this. One. And um, I really need that. I'm trying to write a book, actually. And whatever chapter I write, I give it to Rati, who's, who's uh, my uh, spouse. And she reads through it, not only to correct the grammar in English, which she's better at than me, but also to, to witness, to, to make sure that what I am writing is not either uh, downplaying or overplaying uh, what actually happened in my life or, or, or the journey therein. And there's a, a, there's a touch of reality there. It's very, very critical that uh, you have a witness. Uh, I, I really believe that. Um, and what was the second one that you asked? How important are conversations? In oh my life? God, conversations are very important. And um, yet again, the one-way conversation is phenomenal in my life. You can uh, see me in YouTube, in, in shows, read about me in interviews. So people think this guy is always in conversation. But that's not a conversation. A conversation is a dialogue where I can sit down with a cup of coffee and actually share my happiness, my tears, my so on and so forth. And that comes back to my failure. If I had those friends, those Langutia Yas, who had no hidden agenda, no hidden interests, and were just there to say, Labas na ban ke those people can, and people I meet now, it's very difficult for them to say that to me because I am Anil Jha and you know, it's, 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 it's a different uh, dynamics that comes into play over there. So those dialogues are very important. And for me, that's what I say, if I was in America and I had lived the life that I have lived, I would have a very good psychiatrist and I would be <laughs> visiting that psychiatrist very often. But I'm in Nepal, so I visit God. So I have my dialogues with God. Right. Uh, I pray. Uh, but not only in my puja quota twice a day, but I pray when I am alone, when I am driving, because for me, God is is that sounding board, is that person, that that being, that entity with which I can have that dialogue, which maybe I cannot have because again of the failure and those non uh, long term lasting relationships. So dialogue is very important. Uh, my daughter is now um, grown into a wonderful young woman. She's studying in Barnard in Columbia. Uh, so those dialogues I can have with her. There are dialogues I can have with her which I cannot have with my wife also, you know, because that relationships put some parameters as to what dialogues. But with my daughter, I can have any dialogue. So she is like the the Langutia Yar that I didn't have, which I got much, much later in life. And I, I look at that relationship evolving and fulfilling me uh, so much uh, these days. Um, and that's that's wonderful. That's great that you say that she's become a friend to you. But does she ask you uncomfortable questions? Questions that make you uncomfortable? She does. She not only asks me uncomfortable questions, she's um, with me, she's without filter in the sense that she will tell it to me as it is. Right. If she doesn't like something, she will tell it to me. If she likes right. something, she'll tell it to me. But when she says so, I know that she's saying so, uh, not because she wants me to feel good. Uh, sometimes when I'm feeling bad, she may say something <laughs> that makes me feel. But generally, she's saying it because that's what she believes. And that's what good friends do. No? That's right. what uh, people not who met me when I was Anil Shah, but if he had met me, if, and I was a very introverted child as, as a, um, in school. People don't believe that, but that was me. I was very quiet. I was very shy. That's why people who knew me uh, and who see me now say, oh, what happened to you? You know, you were so quiet and so, and now you're like, you know, all this sort of thing. Um, that evolution, as you said, the witness, there's no witness. If, if there had been someone walking beside me right from the time when I was a shy guy to who I am today, um, they would have seen that and, and been witnessing and maybe, maybe helped me become a better me. Uh, but then, you know, and that was my brother. Uh, large extent, that was my brother uh, till uh, many years ago when he passed. And after that, um, it, it's been my spouse and I'm very fortunate to have a spouse who's truly a partner, who also tells it to me as it is and keeps me grounded, very much grounded. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's very important. Uh, my dialogue is with God and with uh, my daughter. And, uh, and, and uh, when there's no one around, maybe my dogs. I have good dialogues with my dogs as well. That's fabulous. How openly do you express your vulnerabilities and your fears with the people that this close knit small circle that you share? Not well, with? not well. I'm a Leo, so that <laughs> itself, that sun sign itself doesn't let me do that. Right. Um, 
uh, also the fact that um, there is a persona to protect, right. I feel. Uh, so it's, it's very, very uh, difficult. And sometimes, um, especially when my daughter was young or when we have young puppies in the house, my wife sometimes says, you know, what if people saw you like this, you know, rolling <laughs> on the floor, getting slobbered on and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's to a very small circle. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I still wear a suit and tie every day. You know, that's that's the persona that people want. Uh, and the red and the red frames of the and the red frames and, and now the mustache and, the and now well, I'm right. stuck with the mustache as well. So it's it's different. And and someone told me the other day. Uh, first it was the red frames, uh, then it was your mustache, and now it's this beads, the red. prayer beads with the rudraksh. Right. So you keep. Um, and I see I have to keep continue to being <laughs> in, you know being interesting to people <laughs> so that they keep looking at different things. Um, but it is very difficult. Uh, serious note, it is very difficult to open up. Um, and I, I really uh, love to see when people open up and don't have those boundaries that they keep themselves in. Um, my friends, you know, colleagues, acquaintances, some people are just very open about who they are. And sometimes I wish, or maybe I wish I could be like that, um, but it's, it's a wish too late. Um, I don't think I, that I can ever be that. Uh, the most open I think I will be is when that book, if it ever gets finished, uh, that will be a, a sort of bearing my soul sort of thing in, in, in the book as to my journey and what I've learned and what uh, I hope others can learn from it. Uh, but it's very difficult for me to sit down and just say, okay, let me bear my soul to you, except to God. Do you find it easier to write on paper? <clears throat> Hmm, I don't know. It matters. If I think no one's going to see it, then maybe it's easier to write on paper. <laughs> so it is about closing in that. It is about closing in. Um, I don't know. It's, it, you know, I, I could say, yeah, I'm an open person. I'm very open like a book and all that and all. But it's not the truth. You know, it's, it's, I'm open about the persona. Uh, today I'm here uh, being the person I think they want to see, that you want to see and all. Um, I thought maybe I shouldn't go in a suit and maybe I should wear a jean jacket and go today. Uh, but then I have to go to uh, customer meet, so I had to wear this and come. But e even the way you know I look is is, is tailored to the person that to maybe I am not to the image that that people want to see. You know, uh, that's why I, I sometimes I do things like grow this. Mo it's not mean. I never. It's not. Like I always had this mustache and this beard and stuff. It was my thing of saying, like, wait a minute, let me just show a little bit of myself here. Yeah, let me grow this thing. And then now it's become like, this is me now. now. You know, it's, now it's the trademark. Now you if know? you let go of that, people in Bhad Patini may be like, is yeah, he Anisha? Is, is he not yeah. Anisha? Is so. it Chasma at the stage? Chasma and Mustache at the Is it Anil Shah? Maybe just a carbon copy or something. I don't know about uh, other people, but when I look at myself in the mirror, I may not recognize myself. <laughs> Who the hell is that? You know, so. I don't know. It's, it's uh, yeah. I wish it was easier. But then you can't have everything, so it's it's not for me. Opening up is not that easy. You know, this is this is the craziest thing because only yesterday I was thinking that inside of me there's so much that I want to share, yeah. and in spite of the fact that I speak so much, and in spite of the fact that I have so many friends yeah. that I've known for such a long time, my biggest fear is that I won't get a chance to share everything I want to say. Yeah. And for me, the absolute opposite is true, where I feel suffocated sometimes because there's so many more things I want to say, so many more poems I want to write. And to hear it from you is giving me another person's perspective, which is so completely different from a person who I think seems very similar to me because speaks, shares, yet you have the absolute opposite fear and the absolute opposite. And that's crazy. It is. It is. Uh, and that's that's what's lovely as well, you know, that each of us are unique in our Absolutely. own way. And that uniqueness um, gives us happiness. Uh, in, in our own way. If I try to be you or you try to be me, uh, we may be a better version of the other person, but we will not be happy. Um, and th I think the main thing is to realize what are your strengths and your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And then to, for me, uh, to succeed is not to work on your weaknesses, is to work on your strengths. And that's where I think we are wrong. You know what, what Gorika Singh is a swimmer. Right. She's not trying to play cricket. Absolutely. Paras Kharga is not trying to swim. Navi Yogi is not trying to play uh, cricket. You know, right. Each of them have their core competencies and strengths. They've grabbed onto it. And every day, every moment, they're trying to become the better us. So I'm a great speaker. Maybe I'm not good in maths. What do I do? I take tuition in maths. I try to do things. So my English comes down. My maths goes up. I become average, average. in everything. And what a sad life an average life is, you know. Just grab on to what you can do. You can paint, just paint. You know, you can do math, just do math. If you can communicate, just communicate. But from good to great, great to exceptional, exceptional to outstanding. That's what you should be. Every day, you shouldn't try to be a better, yeah, I want to be more than him, I want to be more than her. No, I want to be more than me yesterday. And tomorrow, I will be more than me today. So if we can live our life that way, I think, um, I don't know how far you'll go, but I know that you'll have a smile and you'll be very happy. 
So the law of incremental gains is basically what we're talking That's about. That's what it right? is. Just a bit better every day. Just a bit better at doing what you are great at doing. Right. Not what your mom and dad are great at doing or your brother and sister or anybody. Absolutely. So tell me one thing. In doing all of these, you say, sometimes you forgot to stop and smell the roses, as they say, right? Yeah. In doing this, this sort of moving and focusing on yourself, which is a great thing, which is why we have somebody like you to look up to. But in doing this, you say, sometimes you forgot to sort of pause and to reset and to unwind and to sort of, you know, be with people and be around people and just have those conversations. Did you also feel sometimes that some of the people, let's say cousins and family who knew you from the past, do you feel that now you've reached this particular level, there's a disconnect because of the persona? There's a disconnect with the people around because of the persona? Yes, I, definitely. Yeah, that's, that has to happen, you know. Um, if I had uh, lived my life uh, by giving a property on rent and living off the rent, first I wouldn't be on your show, right. even though I, uh, financially I may have been better off than I am now by giving big buildings on rent. Um, but by evolving at this pace that I've evolved at, uh, there is a disconnect. And it's a, not a disconnect of jealousy or thing. It's a disconnect of conversation, mm -hmm. a disconnect of mindset. It's a disconnect. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't party. Um, so people find me boring. Yeah. You know, when, when they get down to say, oh, come on, have a drink. I say, no, I don't drink. And, and the reason I don't is it's very easy to talk, especially if we're articulate like you are and I am. But it's very difficult to walk that talk. Right. Suppose, you know, you finish this interview and you think, wow, that was good. You know, he's a, a wonderful guy. And then you see me today evening drunk as anything in some club or some restaurant, you know, slobbering all over the place and coming yeah. in, you know, mm, dealing with you in an inappropriate way and all. Finished. Absolutely. That, that's, it's, it's gone. I need to walk the talk so that people who look at me will also walk the talk. Because if we are going to build this nation, I'm now more than just building myself or the institutions I'm part of. Because those things I can do myself. But together we need to build the society, we build, need to build the nation. And the youth that I see today, the point that they're starting off is so far ahead from where I started when I was their age. Their, their evolution, their interests, their, you know, just looking at them going to Nepal. Right now I was talking to some tourism people and saying, my God, if it wasn't for the young uh, domestic tourists, we would be doomed. And by young, we mean, you know, from anywhere from, let's say, 20 to 30 years old. Uh, they are the ones who are going everywhere right now. And the difference, I also went to a few places and all, but I went on my mother and father's money. Today's youth are going on their own money. Absolutely. They're entrepreneurs, they're doing their own things, they're generating their own revenue and they're going around enjoying life. I want to be able to add all that I can from my journey of life to them so that that becomes fuel so that they can go much further. They say, we want to be like you, die. No. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be better than me. I want to, I'm waiting for that day when they're running beside me and more for the day when they're running in front of me. And that is what they're capable of doing. And I think that's, that's um, you know, today when, when I look at myself and I look at that disconnect with the people who may have journeyed with me and all, it doesn't bother me because I'm connecting with tomorrow, the future, the youth. And the days when I want to sit under a big people could tree and, and, you know, marrow some guff, I want to know that my institutions, my society, my nation is in better hands than when it was with me because now it's in the youth's hand. And that can only happen if people like you, me, people who've got the experience share that experience. Okay? Has this been a realization that's come in the recent past or has this been some thought and like a thought and a mindset that you've always had? No, no, no. No, it's not a mindset that I've always had. I wish I could say that. See, I have something called a happiness formula. Okay, Every one of us wants to be happy. There are five ingredients of happiness and how much of each ingredient you require is unique to you. The first is family and friends. Some people want to spend as much time with family and friends. Some people have no time with family and friends. The second is money and economic wealth. Some people are happier the more wealthy they are. Some people don't understand what's the relationship between money and happiness. The third is health. We don't want to be unhealthy, but some people meditate, eat right, do yoga. And I'm talking about physical, psychological, emotional health. Right. The fourth is power, status and authority. Some people love it. Some people, it's a demotivator. They get sick if, if it's, they get put into the spotlight. And the fifth is your relationship with yourself and yourselves with God, right, and, and the greater good. So my happiness formula, when I was doing my bachelor's, when someone taught me the happiness formula, was very different. I would not come on shows like this when my happiness formula was not where it is. Every day I do my, every year I do my happiness formula on my birthday. I take these five ingredients, family and friends, money and economic wealth, health, power and status, greater good and God. I put 100 on top, and then I divide that 100 in terms of the importance 
If money is it, put 70 on money. If Correct. money is what makes. If money is not, put 20 in money. Then you will know this is the things I need to be money uh, to be happy. If money is not what makes you happy, then don't start a business or join banking. If you need time with family and friends, don't go into, into the public arena. Once you know your happiness formula, then you lead your life towards that happiness. And once you do that, that's when you realize that's fulfilled. Not you, I know so many rich people who say, Kokrosa jindagi. It's, I live a hollow life. Why? Because they've been following someone else's happiness formula. It's like you're standing in a bus station. You want to go to Pokhara, I want to go to Biratnagar. Somehow you convince me that Pokhara is the place to go, I get onto your bus. I land up in Pokhara, you're happy because you wanted to go to Pokhara, and I'm looking around saying, what the hell, what am I doing here? Right. It's just one journey on a bus. What about 20 years of your life if you go on someone else's bus and then you realize, wow, you know, everyone is saying, wow, I wonderful name in your designation, big bank account. But that's not what's giving you, you know, you wanted to do something for the society. You wanted more time with family and friends. So what I am today is because of my happiness formula today. Ten years back, happiness formula was different and I was doing something completely different. Today, I interact with the youth. If you look about 10, 12 years back, I wasn't interacting that much with the youth because that wasn't important to me. Something else was important to me at that point of time. But that may not be that important now. Something else is important. So do your happiness formula. Know what makes you happy. Ice cream and chocolates made you happy when you were a little child. They still make you happy, but not as much happiness as that time. So if you continue to just gorge on things, why am I not as happy as I was when I was six years old? The happiness formula has changed. In every aspect of life, happiness formula will change. Find out what your happiness formula is. Find out what your core competencies and strengths are. Dovetail those two in and you'll have an amazing life. That's a great, that's a great strategy, so to say. You know, I mean, we're not just talking, we're not just talk, talking about abstract concepts, but I love that you give this as a strategy almost, something that you can implement. These are my strengths. That's my five-point happiness formula. And this is where I'm going to merge the two. And I'm going to sit down and literally with a pen and paper in hand, work out exactly what makes sense to me and lead my life in that direction. <clears throat> yeah. You do this once a year on your birthday. On my birthday. Has this helped you evolve yes. and understand yourself? Uh, we all evolve, right. uh, whether you know it or not. Right. The question is, are you evolving in the direction that is giving you happiness or not? Right. Many times I find youth, old people, everybody evolving as per their family's needs, as per their society, as per the, what they deem to be the, the perception of, of what people want them to do. And that's very sad because it's your life. It's not your parents' life, not your kids' life. It's your life. You need to know what makes you happy. And, and once you do this happiness formula, you will know this is what I need to do then every day you work towards making that a reality. At certain age, people go for Tirtha Yatra. They go for religion because the happiness formula has changed. Yes. Number five has become very important. Greater good, your relationship with yourself, relationship with Atma's relationship with Paramatma, very important. You ask a teenager, not very important at that point of time. Why? It's the same person. Right. Why is it that 60 years, 70 years down the line, that person's... Because the happiness formula has changed. So it is very important that you do this. And then you know for yourself how much you share or not is a different thing altogether. You know, if money is very important, you may not want to go around saying, look, all of your friends and family are not important. I just want money. You know, may not want to say that, may not be wise for you to say that, but you need to know that yourself. Because if you don't know that, it's like getting on a bus without knowing where you're going. Then do you get there or not? Who knows? Because you don't know where you're going anyway. And that's a sad way to lead life. So this mindful introspection and evolution is basically like a guiding light that you can say, yes. something that sort of is like a compass. It's a compass. It is a compass. It's a compass of life that, that tells you, you know, now turn right, turn left, go straight, go up, go down. And once, once you are able to um, sort of take this in and make it part of your life, part of your DNA, you will see how amazing it is. And then you will see slowly, year by year, how you change, you know. At, at some point of time, uh, something was very important. And, and, and I look at it in, in my, you know, the years that I've been doing this. And I say, wow, you know, that was very important at that point of time. But not anymore. And then I think, you know, what is important today? At that time, I hadn't even thought of that. You know, did, 10, 12 years down the line, engaging with youth and all. Come on. I was like, I'm not some guru or some politician. What the youth and I, what do I have to do with it? I'm a banker. You know, I need to make money for myself, for my institution, big bonuses and all. Um, hey, things change. Um, and you change and you evolve. You will evolve. You will just like, you know, you grow older and older, you can't stop it. As a person, also you will evolve. The question is, do you know how you are evolving? Are you controlling your ev evolution? And is that evolution taking you in the direction you want to go or the direction somebody else or society wants to you to go in? So it's all about the mindfulness of this. And Absolutely. It's about putting in that self, that understanding and introspection of yourself in that evolution. 
Great. Now, since we're talking about, let's say, strategies, I would now like to, since we're coming towards the end of this, I would like to request you to give two strategies that the youth can use, not only to evolve, but to live their best lives. So we've already spoken about the happiness formula. Yes. We've spoken about focusing on your strengths rather than, you know, sort of working on your weaknesses so that you become average like everybody else. Two more strategies maybe, something that they can implement, actionable steps, that the youngsters who I know are following you, watching you, looking at your every step, apart from the moustache and the, and the glasses, what are two strategies that they can do in order to become just better versions of, of themselves and work on their PB? Yeah. Well, the two that I lead my life by, I've already shared with you. Do your happiness formula, find out your core competencies, dovetail those two in. But I find a lot of youth attending a lot of online seminars, watching programs, going to live seminars and all, getting inspired, getting knowledge. First step, follow inspiration with perspiration. Implement, implement, implement. Don't do big things, do small things, but implement. If you implement, then you start to become the best version of you today. Not tomorrow, not some many people. When I become a manager, when I get a job, when I get married, when I get this, when I get, then I will show who I am. Show the best version of you today by implementing all that you know today, because that's the only way tomorrow you will become a better, better version. If you keep waiting, it's like I keep telling people, some, when you get into a bus to go to a picnic, let's say, you're going to Pokhara, there's two groups of people. One is the people who are sitting and saying, I know, traffic jam, ho, how many more hours, when will we reach? The other is standing at the back with the guitar and the minute the thing is there, the holiday has started for them. Right. Be that type, you know, don't wait for the major milestones. Be, be the type that, that takes it forward and do the thing. And the second is, I, I really believe, you know, in today's day and age, a lot of us are trying to be somebody else. Please stop doing that. My thing is, just be you, you know. I always say, Malai, I have one child and she's a daughter. And a lot of people say, Tamayko chori, the chora jaste holani. I say, Mero Nepal, Singapore, or Switzerland jaste chahi dehna, Nepal jaste chahi ncha. Ra mero chori chora jaste hai na, chori jaste chahi ncha. I want them to be the best version. I want my nation to be the best. I want me to be the best version of me. I don't want to be like my father and my mother or my mentors or so and so forth. I will learn from all of them to be the best version of you. That's what you need to be. I'm from Nepal, like Singapore, na banao. Sab chiso ke ram from Nepal banao. Chori line, chora na banao. Ra afule aur ukosai na banao. Just be the best version of you, and that's an amazing way to live life. Thank you so much, Daya. I think this is like the high point of this, and I'm just so glad that. We had this conversation because A, it's an eye-opener for me. There's so many new things I learned. There's so much that I think you shared today about your personal experiences and how having that one friend, that one witness can really make so many differences in your life. I also understood and I personally, I told you before this and that, you know, I have three friends who I know for the last 34 years, 33, and I'm that old to have <laughs> friends that I know for such a long time. Because I remember I have pictures with these friends uh, sitting on their mom's laps when I was a kid. Yeah. So I still have those photographs and we're still in touch on a weekly basis. Basis. So I realize now even more important, you know, their importance and I want to hold them closer. And I think that's a great thing that we've also left the audiences with today. Exactly, yes. Apart from all these wonderful strategies that you've set that people can implement immediately in order to genuinely change their lives. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dai. This has been an eye-opener. This has been a great conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed myself here. And I'm hoping that a lot of people watching this are going to be inspired to just work a bit more on themselves in the right direction, mindfully. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me here. I really, really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you Thank you much. so much. Thank you. This conversation with Mr. Shah truly has been so enlightening. It's been educative, enlightening, informative in equal parts. In fact, I really loved some of the things he spoke about when he started with a failure that was more personal than professional in nature, when he spoke about compartmentalization, when he also spoke about his personal happiness formula. I think this is something that you and me can implement in our lives immediately. I also love that he said that we must focus on our strengths because truly working on our strengths is what is going to make us unique and help us stand out. Most importantly, however, today he made me realize the importance of friends. I'm extremely lucky I have at least three friends that I know for over three decades myself. I know that today I'm going to call them and tell them that I love them. And I urge you to do the same. And I know that the next time I meet them, I'm going to hug them just a bit tighter. Thank you so much, Mr. Shah, for not only showing us what it means to be a true leader, but for also being a beacon of light and helping us work on our relationships better. Thank you for being who you are. <music>